Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks in another match of Beyond All Reason. Today we're taking a look at Erebos Lake, a match that was played recently by a couple of top tier commanders on one of my absolute favorite maps. And I know I say that about a lot of maps, but this one is definitely true. You can tell that certainly by the amount of times that I play this on the live stream. It's got everything that a man could dream of. And I'm excited to see exactly what goes down today on these water, ri water ridden island sectors of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vacation getaway. Look at these wonderful palm trees and everything. Now spawning here is the Cortex Commander in red. Commander that goes by the name of Zebra. Gonna be spawning right on the front lines in what is prototypically the naval position. Looks indeed like Zeberg is going to be jumping into the water right here, getting his boat on, and hopefully claiming the high seas for the red team all the way across the map. Ah, and also getting into the water. This is going to be a good clash. We have Niza hailing with 44 true scale from Canada. Zeberg with 31, by the way. I just figure I should uh, probably point those out. Going to be also getting their feet wet as a Cortex Commander as well. Not uncommon to see Cortex Commanders in the water. Typically, Cortex navies are, well, pretty much across the board, always considered more powerful in the early and the late game. Their T1 boats are a little better, and their T2 boats are a little better, which means, uh, since there's no T3 boats, yeah, Cortex just tends to win almost every time in the Navy. Certainly, some of the best of the best can maybe make Armada work, but if you're learning Navy for yourself, probably best to go ahead and stick to some of that Cortex Navy is a little bit of a bummer because if you want to go for any transition on transitions on land or anything like that, it means you're sort of locked into the Cortex tech. You can tell that I'm definitely an Armada sympathizer by the way that I speak about this, but it is what it is. It's one of those things that you just have to get comfortable with. Now, one start that I have seen players go for, neither of the commanders here, uh, blue or red, have gone for in this match, but I have seen before, is instead of grabbing these three metal extractors, is instead starting with a title generator and then going directly into the shipyard, then claiming these metal extractors after the fact. Obviously, you lose some metal early on that way, but you get your boats out a whole lot quicker, and sometimes I've seen that work really, really well. Neither commander did it this time. This is a little bit more of a greedy, I wouldn't call it greedy per se, but it's just a more standard, slightly, slightly less uh, quick version. Maybe the, maybe the other one would be more greedy, just considering how fast you can get those boats up here. Looks like a transport was handed out for Zeberg. I was wondering if we were gonna go back to capture these metal extractors. Looks like we're actually gonna transport the commander forward here. Lovely stuff. So Nazat is gonna be walking forward while Zeberg is gonna be transporting forward. Obviously that means Zeberg is gonna get up to these very valuable 3.1 metal extractors a whole lot quicker and gonna start claiming a whole lot of that juicy, juicy metal, pumping it back into the Navy that oh so desperately needs it. Starting up some defenses over here. We do have a torpedo launcher coming up. We already have a frigate out as well. Gunboat scouting a whole lot of this, but it will go down here eventually as Nazar's laser cannon blasts it out of the sea and the frigate gets the first kill in the waters for today. Zydka transporting the commander around. Interesting. This is spotted over here. Yeah, okay. We found the commander on this way. Do we have any fighters in the air? Oh, no fighters in the air quite yet for me. Daw, the air player right here for the blue team means that this commander is going to have a wonderful time transporting across the map right now in claiming a very, very nice advantage over on this section of the map. Typically, as the commander here in in purple, Neutro, would uh, be playing this, usually they would want to be able to control this because you need these metal extractors right here. Instead, there's going to be tons and tons of space right here for Zydka to hold onto and, of course, improve the economy with. This is looking fabulous right here for the yellow commander. Northern side, not similarly contested. We do have J-Dog transporting around as well. I think we need to be more aggressive, though. If we're going to transport forward, we might as well transport all the way. There is a fighter over here, though, so you do have to be a little bit careful about that. Yeah, fighter lingering above, trying to shoot down the commander's transport. Got to be so careful with those transports. They are made of paper. Easy for them to go down. In the blink of an eye, they can fall. Now we do have a little bit of coaching here. Fourth stage being indicated as to where he should be fighting over here. The Maroon Commander going to be in charge of holding off this little section on the southern, this little crossing point right here between the blue and the red teams. Locking this down and holding it is sufficient as long as you can pork the enemy off of their line and you can manage to hold yours. Typically that's sufficient to gain yourself an advantage because of course you get this geothermal and all the metal extractors here. And so holding that down is going to be really, really important right now for the Maroon Commander. And it does look like Pyro Table as well is going to be spamming out some units to try and help with all that. I think that looks wonderful. Zydka going for a very forward vehicle lab here. Going to be pumping out some of those Janus. All right, good stuff. Those Janus, tremendously powerful, as we all know and love slash hate. Definitely the way I'd uh, describe that relationship that we all have with the Janus. Losing tons and tons of your units to two or three Janus connections. Definitely feels bad. Submarine over here, under the sea. Firing away at whatever it can. Getting connections against the frigates is actually really nice. 
Frigates have moderate HP. They have medium damage output. They have medium range. They're kind of the jack of all trades. Perfect for getting into these engagements, but their one weakness is, of course, that they can't be attacked by these submarines under the water. So it does mean if you have a submarine and you're going up against exactly the right composition, you can put yourself in a really, really good position. Zeberg continuing to build this high ground over here. I actually really like this. We're locking down these 3.1 metal extractors as well. Going to make it really inconvenient for an Azad to push forward. Azad trying to make up the difference right here by consuming all of the metal in these rocks. It's a good boost of metal right now, but I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Uh, compared to the amount of metal that these metal extractors are pumping out per second. You can see 920, uh, even more, 950 metal per second currently available right here for the Red Commander. We desperately need more energy production. I think all of these constructors need to start working on tidal generators. We need to nearly triple our power before we're going to be able to keep up with the actual metal production we've got. Obviously risky to start investing in power if your opponent's investing heavily in Navy. There we go. Yeah, more solid power infrastructure set up over here for the blue commander. Still though, neither commander making that crazy investment into titles. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Title speed of 20 is not as efficient as solar panel, or uh, pardon me, as fusion reactors, as efficient as solar panels. I think title speed would have to be pretty much abysmally low to be worse than a solar panel. I think it'd have to be about 10. Somebody can do the math on that, but I think it'd be around 10. Anywho, I don't know if there's any map that has title speed that low. Typically, title speed is always efficient. Of course, the limiting factor being that you have to get into the water to build tidal speed, so it all balances out. Incisor is getting a catch on one of the constructors over here for Golden Arrow. That's quite nice. Shouldn't get on some metal extractors, too. Important to recognize the value in doing that. And gonna get a couple more over here as well. Yeah, you know what? I don't mind it whatsoever. There we go. A couple more metal extractors going down, and the amount of time it's gonna take to rebuild those is the real winner here. These metal extractors are gonna be down for a good long while. Unless Golden Arrow can go rebuild these then these are going to stay down until we can get a constructor back over there to resaturate those metal extractors. We do have medium tanks coming out right now, and we should definitely be diverting them to try and clean up these incisors. Eventually, we will. There we go. Medium tanks slowly but surely shutting all this down. Two of the incisors have fallen. There's a third. Let me get those pings off your screen. There we go. And the fourth one under fire here as well. Such an awkward engagement right now, though, for the Red Commander. Zeberg has transported his commander back off the high grounds over there after locking those down with a bunch of LLTs, making it very difficult for the commander to push forward. Pretty much the only option is to use your commander to push forward right there. Is, uh, uh, okay, we're doing a, a little LLT battle here. <laughs> Nizaw versus Zeberg going to be going up against each other here, trying to continually ba battle it out on land as well as on sea. This is so tricky because you have to micro... All of this on land while also microing your ships over here. Heavy emphasis on what's going on between the red and blue commanders. But I gotta say, the naval fights are always so tense. One bad engagement and the whole thing can flip on its head. You can be in a really, really tough spot all of a sudden. Big push over here on the right-hand side is the yellow commander sends forces for Zydka into Neutro. Oh man, every time there's Janus's fire sends shivers down the spine of whatever their target so happens to be. A lot of missiles headed towards the purple commander over here, down to 51%. Only takes a couple of connections from those Janices, a couple of clean connections. Oh, to blast a commander to smithereens. At this point, the medium tank run by has opened up the opportunity for Zydka to send infantry forces forward, and there we go. Metal extractors fall as well as all the shell shockers. Zydka's commander looking pretty rough for wear here, 28% on the yellow commander but certainly not unhappy with the way that trade just went. Those medium tanks are in the base now, and they do pop a bunch of the metal extractors. Yeah, this is a really, really nice bit of damage right now. Capitalizing on that metal advantage from transporting very far forward early on. Here we have some Garpikes pushing forward as well. Going to be quite nice. Garpikes do a huge burst of damage. They fire very slowly, but the shot that they do fire does a pretty good amount of damage. Makes them very good for specifically targeting down, for instance, the static defense structures. EDOT transported over here, but the Purple Commander has already fallen along with the base over here, which is going to be really, really nice. Medium tanks going on a rampage through the blue player's productions. Oh, uh, EDOT, a lot of trouble. Yeah, Janus is continuing to fire away here. Oh, almost got another shot off, too. I think that shot might have killed that commander if it had happened. And these medium tank, this medium tank infantry push is extremely effective. Lovely, lovely stuff. Fighters are pulled as well to shoot down any shurikens that are holding up this progress. This is an excellent opportunity for Zyka to go for T2 if they so choose to. Nizah with the LLTs has managed to blast down two of these metal extractors up here, but has not claimed their own. It means that the advantage is still heavily in the favor of Zeberg here on the, on, the, on the land and in the seas. T2 constructor transported over right now. We'll get to work on these land-based T2 metal extractors as well. Always really, really good stuff. 
Z-Bird, keeping the fight up, continuing to build LLTs, making sure that Nizah can't progress forward here. We have a, uh, yeah, a coastal torpedo launcher. Not going to be very good against the commander, but certainly going to be all right against any ships, for instance, that tend to go in this direction. Or if the commander retreats into the sea, that's another option. As we do start to see quite a spread of composition over here, actually. Yeah, we've got destroyers, frigates, missile ships, all sorts of stuff. Real quickly, want to check on this northern side as we do see Holdorini. Yeah, Holdorini. Holdor! Maybe that's what that's a reference to. Anyway, Holdorini going up against Ed Kaizakom. There we go. Ed, Ed Kaizakom, the pink commander, who's going for an agitator right now on the front lines. This agitator is well within range of everything right here that the poor, unfortunate Powder Blue commander has on their back. But there's also a gauntlet here to fire away as well. So there you go. Gauntlet and, namely, a radar jammer over here. Radar jammer blocking out any of the radar signals. If we switch to the pink commander's view right now, you can see we are aware of what's going on over here, but we don't have any radar signature for it. So currently we're going to have to dump fire this. There we go. I'm going to start firing back at the base over here for the powder blue commander, and we're going to have ourselves a good old-fashioned duel of the cannons. Those, uh, those walls are actually doing a great job of tanking right now. There we go. Sending the tanks forward. Big old Centurion ball over here. I'm actually curious to see how the Centurions do against all this. They kind of got the ideal circumstance here. They've got the walls in front to protect them. Ah, uh, but they're not tall enough to shoot over them. Hmm, interesting. Well, there we go. Medium tanks take down the gauntlet here. Commander in a whole lot of trouble as well. Oh no, Commander. Boom goes the Commander, opening up that line very nicely right here for the pink Commander. Gauntlet is still dumb firing. Got to be careful about that. Might shoot our own troops in the back here in just a second. Oh, oh. Oh, we didn't. Wow. Nice micro right there. That's some heavy APM usage right there. Spending it all on saving your troops from your own friendly fire. APM well spent, I would say. Just a good old-fashioned T1 army moving forward. Yeah, I mean, Zydka's got the advantage. Why not capitalize on it? And here we go. Tanks rolling around all over the place. We're capturing the metal extractors. Continuing to eat up all of the units over here as well. Some nice Deegans right there from Rika. Eating up a whole, or, well, D getting down, I should say, a whole bunch of those medium tanks. Shut them down. Really one of the only efficient ways to kill those medium tanks but before you get into T2, T3. Using that D-gun to wipe that metal clean off the face of the map. Janus tanks not bad against medium tanks either. Just for the fact that their splash damage does a little bit of impulse, slowing and stunning those tanks ever so slightly, making them a better target for everything else. That being said... Even the mighty Janus is not capable of one-shotting the medium tank. Really the only efficient way of doing that. Naza, sneaky beaky like moving his way under the seas here. A tremendous naval fight, by the way. Took my eyes off it for just a minute, and you can already see. Wonderful, wonderful presence right here from the Red Commander, who's won the fight and has used the res subs to now patch up some of these boats, send them back to the front line, and also has all this juicy metal to more than happily use on new boats. Zebra trying to get up this hillside here. Actually taking quite a lot of firepower. Gotta be so careful about that. LLTs will kill this red commander near instantaneously. Meanwhile, Nazaz is running forward. There he goes. Ooh, torpedo launcher is pretty good, though. Commander can't maintain that cloak forever. Despite trying. There we go. Commander stops moving. Means it's in range to capture. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> capture command goes down right here from the blue commander. Capturing these torpedo launchers turning their sides and just like that we've got two blue torpedo launchers now firing away in the base of the red commander what a play right there from Nazah. definitely a desperation move but a desperation move well done using that commander's capture ability to take over some of the very powerful static defense over here and turn its sides on the red team we're sending the whole navy back and right now that means that uh, zeberg is coming back as well the commander walking over in this direction Nizam moving into the base right here. Probably more than happy to self be at this point. Oh, gonna go for a capture command again. All right, not bad. Oh, where are the destroyers? Oh, the destroyers are too far back. And the lab is now the blue commanders. <laughs> Beautiful little play right there from Nizam. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Captured the lab and then made, well, essentially made the red army kill it and then reclaimed a whole bunch of that metal from it. Commander will go down right here. So at the very least, there's some metal to pay back for all that damage for the uh, for the red commander here, Zeberg, but definitely a little bit inconvenient, losing your entire base to a single commander, capturing annoyingly all of your stuff. Hilarious. Hilarious indeed. We've got a full-blown T2 transition coming up right now. Wind speed is abysmal. 
That's why a lot of these commanders are e-stalling right now. You can see we've set up plenty of coastal defenses. Calm Eater trying to set up a nice little fortifications over here. We've got tons and tons of Sheldon that have been wonderfully blasting apart any of the naval units that come a little too close. Here we go. Yeah. Sheldon kind of a pretty good option for coastal defense, actually. Yeah, as long as you can kite them fairly well, they do a decent job of firing away and putting a little bit of damage on these boats. This is the rescue run, though. Those destroyers do have quite a lot of range, and so they are effective against these T2, these thinner T2 artillery bots. Nice joint teamwork right there from the red and tan commanders. Jumping on top of the entire Navy right here with the commander down, with the Navy in shambles, with the T2 lab not even completed right here. This is a nightmare scenario for Nazaw. And I do believe that Zeebark has just come out on top on the naval field. We should be expecting at the very least a T2 transition or maybe some sort of radical amphibious lab or anything like that. Something to capitalize on top of all of this. At the very least, eating up a whole bunch of these wrecks and using that metal on some expensive T2 economy here. We need fusion reactors. And at this point, one thing you can always do is use that metal to buy a fusion reactor from one of your teammates. For instance, Frog Ninja has one up and running here. Anybody who's got some T2... You should, uh, you should always consider that they probably would be willing to sell some of that to you. Oftentimes really, really useful. We've gone all the way up to a T2 lab over here, by the way, for Zydka. On the right-hand side of the map, the Yola Commander has invested in T2. I was curious where the T2 was going to be coming out from, a T2 transition, that is. And uh, it looks like actually on the front lines we're going to build our T2 lab. Don't hate it. Certainly going to put those units on the front a lot quicker, which is always going to be a good thing. Capture commands right here. Lovely stuff. Capture commands are used on a bunch of these turrets and structures and other stuff to turn them turn their sides. You can see these turrets were captured as well over here. They've still got their experience bar, but now they work for a different different master entirely. Res subs patching up a bunch of these boats as well. Res subs so powerful for the Navy sector. Important that you don't lose them. Rattlesnake trying its best to fire away. J Dog in a whole bunch of trouble. Oh no. Oh no, J Dog. Not paying attention to the commander for just a second. Almost lost it in a couple of volleys of fire right there from the Sheldons. My goodness, this is a powerful ball of Sheldons we've got built up over here. How many in total? Looks like a total of 20 Sheldons, more or less. Going to be firing away at everything that they can. Now, the Rattlesnake is pretty good for dealing with these. It does a little bit of AoE damage. It does heavy damage uh, as far as, you know, just raw DPS goes. It means that it's going to be fairly good for blasting away these Sheldon, but certainly a little bit uncomfortable to start losing your static defense to these long-range harassment units like this. There we go. Yeah, Rattlesnake doing a good job. Repair on it going to be pretty good too. Sheldon, or not Sheldon, Shuriken on the Sheldon. Paralyze them all and I think the day will be saved here. Nice play from the air player here, the Cyan Commander. Keeping some of those Shuriken around to make sure that they can be used wherever they're needed. And deflecting this Sheldon ball quite nicely. Resbot's going to pick up this, uh, this Rattlesnake here as well. Very nice stuff. Now we've gone T2 and immediately gone into a couple of Buccaneers. However, we do not have the energy to fund the Buccaneers, which is definitely a problem. Those Buccaneers, very, very energy costly to run. They have two heavy laser cannons mounted atop and two light laser cannons mounted below. Obviously going to necessitate quite a lot of power to keep all those well fed. Fiends, meanwhile, jumping on this T1 facility right here for the Lavender Commander. Tons of landmines set up over here, which I don't mind, except again, oh, the wind speed is at 2 right now, meaning only the commanders that went T2 and have those fusion reactors or have a couple of advanced solar panels are not going to be e-stalling. But it also means, of course, that LLTs and landmines, everything that needs power to stay cloaked or fire, not going to have that power here. Heavy tanks now ready to roll forward, and the landmines would be a decent solution to the heavy tanks. If only they could remain cloaked here. Oh, no. Big chain reactions right now as the landmines are flashing. Ah, oh, we need to stop. We need to stop production on everything so the landmines stay cloaked here, but not going to be the case. Down they go. Blasted to smithereens because there wasn't enough energy to fund them at two wind speed. Well, five wind speed now, but still very, very low right here. And that is going to be the end of the Lavender Commander. Never truly rebuilt their base. Lost their T1 production facility. T2 falling right here as well to the Red Navy. Shuriken coming in to try and save the day. Yeah, there are missile boats, though. Uh, is it going to be enough? Missile boats shot down a lot of those shuriken, meaning most of these are going to come back online here any second. There we go. Looks like we don't have the EMP rework on, so these are back to full effectiveness as soon as their EMP is turned off. We have uh, torpedo bombers aiming at the commander over here somehow. <laughs> Ah, uh, torpedo bombers. They only work so tremendously on the open ocean or otherwise against some big long stretch of sea where they can actually 
use their uh, their long range bombing capabilities. Otherwise, they can be quite uh, quite underwhelming. Big T2 push to counterattack on this northern side. Green Commander sending forward, J Dog 75 sending forward a whole bunch of units right now, but it's mostly Hounds. Ah, we had a couple of welders in the mix here, but I think if this was a welder heavier composition, we probably would have seen a little bit more success here. For the most part, these Hounds should almost always be used as a backline support fire unit. And right here, walking to their doom. There they go. Blasted to smithereens by the Sheldon. That had no mercy. Tearing goes all apart. Here comes a big swell of pawns as well. This is just a bunch of pawns built from the early game. Still finding some value here. Taking down wind turbines, taking down whatever they can. The blue economy is in shambles now. Zeberg has made landfall. Gonna be headed directly towards the economic base of the Cyan commander over here, passing the green along the way. Yellow commander using that T2 advantage against those poor unfortunate T1 souls down on the low ground here. Hound's trying to clean up a lot of it, not having much effect. Mouths are very powerful as well, even against those T2. I've explained this before, but the T2 advantage, there's there's vehicles typically tend to be stronger against bots. It's kind of just the way that the game is balanced. And that advantage exists in the T2 world as well. So T2 vehicles are generally going to be better than T2 bots, just on a one-to-one -one scale. Zeberg in a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> are we capturing the last known constructor of the Blue Commander? Yeah, okay. Just messing with the poor unfortunate Nizah as he loses his last command or his last constructor right here. He's trying to rebuild, but Zeberg not having any of it. Moving towards this geotherm over here. Oh, are we going to capture it? Oh, we should totally capture it and then self-destruct it. We are, aren't we? Oh, well, we're getting a little close here. Okay, well, that works. There we go. Down goes the commander, but it takes the geothermal down with it. Shutting off a whole bunch of the power right here for the Seafoam Green Commander. Not that it's going to matter as the bulls start to march forward. Neutro apparently revived and sent Rake back to hell. Down he goes. And here come the bulls to ruin the day of the poor unfortunate Rika. Bulls, one of the funnier looking units in the game. Certainly not to be underestimated. Though. Funny looking. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Southern side has crumbled, northern side has been held, and the blue team calls the resign vote. Looking at this match, it's understandable why. With all these metal extractors left unclaimed, with your player out of the navy, it's only a matter of time before a capital ship ends up on your shoreline, shelling away at everything that it can reach, pretty much all the remaining bases on the low ground here. And indeed, it'll be the red team who takes the victory in today's match of Beyond All Reason. Excellently played right here by Zydka on the southern side. A wonderful naval battle right there from Zeberg, and a beautiful match overall. I sure hope you enjoyed. I certainly know that I did. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you did enjoy this video. Oh, nice little self-D over here. Celebratory self-D. Uh, and subscribe as well if you'd like to join the Brightworks for daily Beyond All Reason cast. Other than that, I sure hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, Commanders.